Do you have thyroid issues? In this video, I'll discuss nine common mistakes people make when using thyroid hormone. As an endocrinologist, I encounter these situations daily. I can assure you that these errors are extremely common. In this video, I'll explain how to take the medication properly. Can you split the pill? Is it okay to switch brands? Are bioidentical hormones real and are they better? Are there any interactions? I'll tell you now, yes. What about weight loss pens like Ozempic Munjaro and acid reducers like Omeprazole? What should you do? Should you take the medicine before or after a blood test? If you forget a dose, should you take two the next day or skip it? So I'll cover everything about thyroid hormone here. What's the first mistake? There are nine. The first mistake is not to break the pill. Why shouldn't you break the pill? Because thyroid hormone pills are designed to be absorbed in the small intestine. So it needs to withstand stomach acid. It's a coated tablet. If you break it, it may lose some effectiveness. There are various dosages, so it's best not to split them. Say your doctor prescribed 50 micrograms, but the pharmacy only has 100. You might think, I'll cut it in half, take 50 today, 50 tomorrow, and be on the right dose. It's better to find 50 MACG pills or take two 25 MACG ones. You can adjust the dose to find the right amount without breaking pills. Got it? Now you know why. This is a common mistake. Let's say it slightly reduces its effectiveness. This alone can change your treatment and hormonal goals. Now number two. What should you do if you forget to take a pill? If you remember the same day, Wait an hour without eating, then take it. After that, wait two more hours before eating again. Got it? But what if I remember the next day? You realize you didn't take the pill. What can you do? In this case, just continue your treatment as usual. Don't take a double dose. Understood? Besides continuing normally, make sure to note it down. You must record this to show your doctor. But why do I have to write it down if I forgot to take it? Let's say you forget three times in a 30-day period. Well, you'll have missed 10% of your dose. This can make a big difference later on. So always note it for your doctor to adjust the dose if needed. Why? Let's say you have a hormonal change, but you forgot three days. Here, the doctor can check if you really need to adjust the dose or if it's just a medication use issue. Okay, I see many think it's no big deal. Oh, just three days. The month has 30, so it can't be that important. Actually, it is very significant. And mistake number three, switching thyroid brands. Can you change brands? If you check, you'll see all brands use the same substance, levothyroxine. So if it's the same, you can switch, right? What do you think? Answer that question. You probably said yes, as that's what many believe about thyroid hormone. But the truth is no, you shouldn't switch brands without your doctor's explicit guidance. Why? Even if the box says it's the same, including dosage, Labs differ in bioavailability and bioequivalence. Often, the same substance is produced in slightly different concentrations because of this. It's allowed by law, right? This isn't specific to one country, but rather a general regulation. When it comes to thyroid hormone, it's crucial to ensure you're taking the same concentration as variations between labs can make a difference. This doesn't mean one lab is better than another, but there's an accepted and regulated margin of error. For thyroid hormone, it's not worth switching just because of this. There's also another factor to consider the active ingredient. Sometimes the raw material used to make levothyroxine differs between manufacturers. This is regulated too, but it can impact your treatment. So I advise against changing brands without consulting your doctor first. Got it? And number four, should you get your blood test before or after taking your medication? The answer is first do the blood test, then take your thyroid hormone, okay? Why? If you take it before the blood test, it can mess with the results, got it? Mainly the free hormone fraction T4, not so much TSH. I'll explain more about this later, but it's mostly about the hormone, okay? It can cause changes. So doctors recommend taking the test first, then taking the hormone. No need to wait. You can take it right after the blood draw. Understood? Mistake number five. Do you take any stomach meds that affect stomach acid? What should you do? You're supposed to take these meds on an empty stomach like thyroid hormone, right? So which one do you take first? Can you take them together? What do you think? Well, if both are on an empty stomach, you'd think to take them together, right? What's your guess? Yes or no? Well, the answer is no. I bet many of you answered yes, just like the previous question. Let me explain why. Before we start, please like this video. I didn't set a like goal. You see? 
there's a lot of misinformation about thyroid hormones. So I'm asking you to like it. This helps YouTube recognize the video's relevance and share it more. So what should you do? First, take your thyroid hormone, then wait 30 minutes. Take stomach meds like omeprazole or pantoprazole and wait another 30 minutes. After that, you can eat. Got it? Remember, thyroid hormone first, then stomach medicine. Can weight loss pens affect thyroid hormone absorption? The answer is yes, okay? Why? Weight loss pens like Ozempic or Saxenda, which are GLP-1 analogs, affect gastric motility. Wait 60 minutes after these. If you're not using weight loss or diabetes pens, you can wait just 30 minutes. Important to clarify this. If you're taking any medication that affects gastric emptying, wait longer, ideally 60 minutes, as it impacts digestion and gut transit. Did you know that? Probably not, right? How many people are using both? Unknowingly? This can impair absorption. Mistake number six is about food. Many myths exist about foods harming the thyroid or causing hormonal changes. While there are many myths, is there any food that can actually interfere with thyroid hormone absorption? This info is on medication labels. Some high fiber foods can impair absorption if eaten right after taking medication. For example, cereal, cottonseed nuts, and soy flour, especially in pediatric formulas. Other foods include seeds like chia and flaxseed. These foods can also affect intestinal transit. You can eat these, but wait about an hour after taking your medication. Don't take the medicine and eat right after. Studies show this can slightly reduce absorption. You've seen that sometimes this small difference in absorption can make or break your treatment. Got it? Remember, it's in the medication guide. Now let's talk about broccoli. Does broccoli harm the thyroid? What about cauliflower? The answer is no you can safely eat broccoli and cauliflower. These studies were done on rats. Rats fed only cruciferous veggies, developed goiters, but this didn't happen in humans, okay? Humans didn't get goiters or hormone issues from eating these. There's also a myth about pool chlorine. Can chlorine vapor harm the thyroid? In humans, this wasn't observed either. Studies show shower exposure isn't enough to affect the thyroid. Studies show chlorine competes with thyroid nutrients for hormone production. So yes, in high doses, chlorine can be harmful. But this isn't the case with showers, for example, okay? Or occasional swimming pool use. Got it? So don't fear swimming pools. There's no need to worry. Why do people say this? Because fear-mongering videos work well. People share them more and watch longer. That's not what we're doing here. I prefer sharing scientific facts for viewers who value real, evidence-based information. Now, number seven. Are bioidentical hormones real? As an endocrinologist, I get this question daily in my office. I want bioidentical hormone treatment because I heard a doctor say they're ideal. But what are bioidentical hormones? A bioidentical hormone has the same molecular structure as the hormone our body produces. The answer is the hormone sold, levothyroxine or T4, has the same formula as what you produce. So it's considered a bioidentical hormone. But some people use this term to try to sell you a more expensive medicine, claiming it's bioidentical. I have patients from the US and I know there's a movement there without scientific evidence to treat thyroid issues with pig hormone. The pig hormone is also similar to the hormone we produce. But it's hard to stabilize TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, and T4 because this pig hormone also contains T3 can have side effects and is harder to control due to its faster action, making treatment less stable. Of course, there are specific cases where T3 is used, but it's for a minority. Why? T3, if used without medical supervision, can increase the risk of arrhythmias and bone formation issues, okay? In select cases where patients can't convert T4 to T3 properly, doctors may consider T3 treatment. But it's not the first choice, got it? Understood? Is that clear? If not, leave a comment and I'll respond. Error number eight. Can thyroid hormone be used for weight loss? What do studies say? To boost metabolism. I hear this often. I'm taking this to boost my metabolism. This is extremely harmful to your body for several reasons. First, if you don't have a thyroid issue or clear need for the hormone, what happens? Your body will become sluggish, your thyroid won't produce hormones, leading to what we call medication-induced hypothyroidism. This happens when the thyroid stops producing its own hormone because you're taking external hormones. Besides risks like losing muscle mass, heart issues, and high blood pressure, your thyroid may become inactive, so no. 
thyroid hormone isn't for weight loss that needs a precise medical indication. Also, many claim TSH should be below 2, which is completely absurd. Many people with normal tests, like a TSH of 3, I'll show a reference value table. You'll see that a value of 3 is within the normal range. There are many videos out there, and people believe them because they're influential, taking meds they don't need. When I ask, what happened? Your tests were normal, so why are you on thyroid meds? They say, the doctor said the new reference is two, that the old one's wrong. That's absurd, okay? Don't believe it. This reference is from the American Thyroid Association. Got it? Error nine, which is common and directly affects your treatment, is about exam timing. For instance, you're on treatment, started thyroid hormone or already take it, and the doctor changed the dose and ordered new tests. How long should you wait to do these tests? At least four weeks, ideally six weeks. Why? Thyroid hormone doesn't change test results overnight or even week to week. So wait at least four weeks to trust the results. I often see people thinking thyroid hormone works like blood sugar. Take medicine, levels change instantly. It's not like that. However, TSH is a hormone, so it has a slow response. To really trust the results, we need to wait a few weeks. Even if the lab calls you for the test or you're anxious, it's worth waiting. Acting too soon can be costly. The doctor might think it's not working and increase the dose. When you get the correct test, the dose could be too high. I see this daily in my practice. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this. Also, let me know which part of the world you're watching from. I'm speaking to you from Porto Alegre. Now, I have a video suggestion for you. It's about eight nighttime habits that increase stroke risk. Are you doing any of them? I suggest you watch it now. Just click here to be directed to that video. Take care. See you next time.